everyone, another day, another striped top and another chemistry topic. Today's little episode is going to be on ionic and covalent bonding. Um, let's talk first of all about what bonding is. Remember that all we're doing here is joining two atoms together. And if those, depending on whether they're metals or non-metals, that helps us decide if it's ionic or covalent bonding. So we've got our atoms, we need to join them together and we need to work out how. First of all, we'll take ionic bonding. As the name suggests, ionic bonding involves ions. What is an ion? Now an ion is a charged particle. That means it has either a positive or negative charge. And what is that associated with? It's to do with electrons. Now remember, electrons have a one negative charge, which means that if you lose electrons, the ion's overall charge will be positive, and if you gain electrons, then it will be negative. So if you gain one electron, it will be one negative, or if you gain two, it will be two negative. So I think that kind of makes sense. Um, in order to actually understand ionic bonding, we need to remember that it occurs between metals and non-metals, and that's a really, really crucial point. I see too often people losing marks because they draw a covalent bond when they mean to draw an ionic bond. So remember, between a metal and a non-metal, it's going to be ionic bonding. So, I need to get my textbook. So the best way of doing this is if I draw it, so I'm going to cut to a drawing. I really hope that that's in focus. I'm going to start with ionic bonding. We're going to take um, sodium chloride as our first example. So the best way of working this out, some people can go straight to the end, but I'm doing a tutorial, so I'm going to show you how to work it out from the beginning. So first of all, take sodium. Remember, because we're doing bonding, we're interested in electrons, and the electron number is the same as the atomic number. So using the periodic table, remember you don't have to learn the periodic table off by heart, I see that sodium has an electron number of 11. So I'm just going to draw the shells of electrons. And remember, the way that it works is that the first shell of electrons can only have a maximum of two electrons, and then after that the shells can have eight. So I've filled up two, then eight, and I'm going to spill over. So we have one electron in our outer shell, which I think we should know anyway, because remember, sodium's in group one, and group one elements have one electron in the outer shell. So remember also that I paired up my electrons, keeping it nice and neat, and to chemistry writing convention. So now chlorine, that has 17, again, using the atomic number, tells me the electron number. I'm going to use dots to represent these electrons. Okay, so now we step back and we have a look. So sodium has one electron, it's outer shell, chlorine has seven. Remember both um, elements want to have a full outer shell and that would be eight in this case. So the straightforward thing here is for sodium to transfer its electron to chlorine. Why is that? Because it's much easier to lose one electron than gain seven. So I'm just going to show you what's going to happen. And then to actually write the answer, we're going to write out, draw out the electrons again. So there's sodium done, now chlorine. Okay, and remember that electron has moved from sodium to chlorine, so we're going to draw it as a cross here. Um, and we see that both elements now have a full outer shell, which is exactly what we were after. Now at this point you have to add brackets. So big square brackets around each. And we have to add a charge. Now because sodium has lost an electron, remember an electron has a negative charge. So in comparison, the sodium ion will now be positive. So that's going to be positive 1. And also chlorine has gained an electron, so it's gained a negative charge. So it will be 1 negative. And there's your answer. So your formula for sodium chloride is NaCl. Right, let's have a look at a more difficult example. This time I'm going to be looking at magnesium fluoride. I'm going to do exactly the same, so I'm going to draw up my electron configuration, so for magnesium it has an atomic number of 12, so its electron number is 12. I'm so bad at drawing, even circles. Okay, and then fluorine, that's 9, so this is what that looks like. Okay, so stepping back, we can see that magnesium has two electrons in its outer shell. It will choose to lose those two electrons. Flora, fluorine has seven electrons in its outer shell and it will want to gain one. However, the problem here lies in the fact that magnesium has two to give away. So in this case, we need two fluorine atoms because then one electron can go here and one electron can go here. So in terms of your actual answer that you're giving the exam, let's quickly do fluorine. I didn't realise how boring it is drawing out these electron diagrams. Whew. 
Okay, so let's sort out the brackets. So magnesium has lost two electrons, so it's lost two negative charges. So therefore, by definition, it has a two plus charge. Fluorine's slightly trickier. Make sure you're looking at the electron here. It's only gained one, so it's going to be one negative. However, because you needed two fluorine atoms in order to balance out the magnesium charge, you're going to write a big two there. And that's what you can do whenever there's an imbalance. Don't draw the two fluorine atoms. Just put a big two in front of the brackets and you're good to go. I'm going to quickly talk about covalent bonding. Remember, covalent bonding occurs between two non-metals. The crucial thing, and this is your definition for a covalent bond, is that it is a shared pair of electrons. So in this case, electrons don't move from one atom to another, they merely get shared, and it occurs between two non-metals. Okay, so remember your summary is ionic bonding occurs between a metal and a non-metal, covalent bonding occurs between two non-metals. So let's look at some examples. I'm going to pick a nice straightforward one, hydrogen chloride. So same old, draw the electron configuration for each. Now at this point, I just want to point out that you don't actually have to draw all the shells of electrons. You can just choose to draw the final shell because then it saves you drawing it out. Because remember, these middle shells are kind of just fillers. But I'm just going to draw it to show you. Right, so some people here might be tempted to do an ionic bond and transfer the hydrogen electron to chlorine. But remember, you can't do that in this case because this is covalent bonding. It occurs between two non-metals. Ionic bonding, by definition, can only occur between a metal and a non-metal. So in this case, we'll just choose to um, share the electrons. Now, just pointing out hydrogen, I know in our previous examples, to have a full outer shell, there was eight electrons needed. But remember, in the first shell, it can only contain a maximum of two. So all hydrogen actually needs to gain is one electron, not seven. So I'm going to draw you how this would look as a covalent bond. So different people have different ways of drawing this, but I draw them overlapping so you can see the sharing of electrons. We're going to fill in the outer shell of chlorine again. There's its final electron. And then hydrogen just had one, so we're going to pop it there. Now, can you see, because they're sharing, they both have a full outer shell. Hydrogen has two and chlorine has eight. I'm going to use methane this time. Um, that's an alkane. Check out my alkane video if you're not quite sure about alkanes. Carbon has six electrons altogether. That looks like this. And hydrogen, nice and straightforward, it only has one. Right, so, we can, first of all you can see from the formula that you'll need four hydrogens, but it also makes sense because hydrogen only has one electron to share. So say that this electron shared over here, you'd still have um, only five electrons in the outer shell and you need eight. So we're going to draw quite a nice pretty diagram, it looks a bit like a flower for this one to show you what it looks like. So I'm going to draw carbon in the middle. And I'm going to draw four hydrogens around the outside. Remember to label them with the chemical symbol so you know which element we're talking about. And then finally fill in the electrons. And as always with these diagrams, have a step back and make sure it makes sense. So hydrogen, they each have two electrons, so that's perfect. Carbon, if you add them up, two, four, six, eight, it has eight electrons in its outer shell. But I'm going to finish off with quite a tricky example, and that's carbon dioxide. Um, remember the formula of carbon dioxide is CO2. The reason being that di means two, so you'll have two oxygen atoms. Um, carbon monoxide's formula is CO because monoxide mono means one, so you'll have one oxygen atom. Anyway, I digress. So let's draw our electron configuration. Because I know from the formula dioxide, I know that I need two oxygens. So keep your diagram symmetrical as always, particularly covalent bonding. So that will look like this. I'm going to draw carbon in the middle and then an oxygen atom on either side. Okay, label them, and then have another look. So oxygen needs another two electrons, and carbon needs another four. So the way, you need to try and work this out, but the way that this is going to work in this case is that they're both going to have to share two electrons in order to make sure that they're both full. So I'm going to start with carbon. So it has four electrons, so... Okay, so there's four, and oxygen has six electrons in its outer shell. So, I know that carbon needs another four, so I'm going to put one in here, one in here. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six. And let's make sure that we keep it symmetrical and do exactly the same on the other side. 
All right, so there's our final example. I really hope you found this video useful. Sorry about all the shaking. As always, big thumbs up if you enjoyed it and don't forget to subscribe. See you guys later, bye.